Hello everyone, welcome to another PWN Design Studio tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to go ahead and break down the coast node. If you watched my making a basic island tutorial that I just posted, you'll notice that I used the coast node, but I didn't really go into detail on how to use it, and that's because that tutorial is just to help break down the nodes that might be helpful in making a simple basic island for you inside of Gaia. Now I'd like to break down the coast node for you so you know what the settings in it do, and how you can better tweak them to get the look you want. The other node I used was the lakes node, and I already have a video on the lakes node, but it has changed since then, so I will be making an updated video, but for the time being, the majority of everything that you would want to know is still available in that tutorial, so I won't be covering the lakes node in this video, but I will be making another one for you for updated information. So let's go ahead and start breaking down the coast node here. I'm not going to worry about anything else in here. Everything else is just for show so I can help demonstrate things. But the main focus here is the coast. I will be reverting to all of my settings that I had here afterwards. So to make note, my water level is at 0.39, my beach size is at 0.01, and my transition is at 0.05. You'll notice that I have these decimals, and it's highly recommended that if you're going to be using anything that requires fine tweaking, like masks, the coast node, lakes, things of that nature, is to go into Gaia, go to preferences, and then select decimals in sliders. I recommend that just by default anyways, because the more control you have on any node that has decimals in the sliders will just be that much better for you as you're trying to fine tune and tweak things. So with that out of the way, that'll help you get set up on how to properly set up your coast here. So the first one is intensity, and I almost always put a tense intensity at 100%. The reason why is because sometimes the coast node can be so fidgety in its uh, sensitivity that you won't see what's happening unless you have an intense effect. The intensity here is just the overall effect of the coast node, so it's not really going to change anything uh, related to this. It might look like it does, but it's either going to be an on and off switch or anything in between. So if you have an intensity of 100%, the coast effect is going to be applied 100% wherever it's being applied to. If you wanted less in a, of an effect that the node gives you, you just reduce its value, as you can see here. Value 35 will get you what we have here, where it's really minor, and uh, we're getting more close to our original shape. If we go closer to 100, you can kind of see how we smoothly transition downwards, that the effect is either on or off. But if we wanted a less intense effect on our coast, we could reduce the amount and we can still get our coastline coming in, depending on our values here. So I'm going to keep this at 100 just so it's easier for you guys to see. But I do recommend keeping the intensity somewhere where it's easy to notice what your effect, where your effect is being applied and how much, and then fine tweaking the intensity as you go along your scene. The water level will be where the water starts and your beach will form. The higher the percentage here, the higher up the landscape your water level will be, and your beach will start at higher elevations too. The lower it is, the opposite is true. It'll just start lower on your, um, whatever your island is you're making, or your continent, or you know whatever it is you're making. The lower the values, the lower it will be to sea floor. A value of 0.39 gets me something similar to this. If I were to increase this very slowly, you can see how that beach is being formed at higher elevations, and that is where our water will start. I'm going to change this back to 0.39. I do apologize if you hear my dog in the background. They do chill with me throughout the day because they hate being separated. The beach size will just plainly be the size of this beach that's being formed. The higher the value here, the larger your beach. However, you have to keep in mind that this will impact your underlying formation. So the larger your beach size is, the more sharp your cliffs will be. So if I increase this, you can see here, we're getting a very steep and sharp cliff edge. And if we maximize it out, we're getting hardly anything or any nothing at all. This is a good way to make reefs that surround your landscape. So if you wanted a reef bed, that's a little bit further out from your island, you could do it this way and then invert it. I'm not going to go into that today, but that is a possibility. Uh, it's kind of similar to what you would have in Geoglyph 
when we were able to form reefs using one of the macros there. You can do the same thing with coast uh, with just a really large beach size and then inverting some values. But we'll get into that in perhaps a more advanced video later down the road. For now, let's go ahead and reduce the beach size to where we had it before. And I'm just going to control Z to get back to what we had, assuming I can. Can't really remember what I had. <laughs> And Gaia on this build is giving me some problems because I am doing some tricky finagly things. Um, for the time being, I think I'm just going to guess where it was. I think it was 0.1 is where I had it. So I'll just keep it there for now. <laughs> okay, so the transition will be how smooth or sharp the transition between your beach and your main formation is. A higher transition value will give you a more smooth gradient, whereas lower values will give you a, a sharper contrast between your main formation and your beach. So if I were to take this from 0 0.05 and decrease that to 0, you can see here we have a very sharp transition. And if I increase this, it starts getting smoother towards the center, so on and so forth. I'd like to have a nice little transition period between the beach and the main formation, just in case I want to make some jutting cliffs later on. Uh, but it really comes down to your tastes. Whatever it is that you want to do, uh, you can do obviously, but uh, 0 0.05 here works for me. After that, you can go about eroding and further forming your landscape. Now you can do it, uh, you, you can make your coast a multitude of ways. You can put your coast in almost immediately after your main formation or after everything else is said and done. Just keep in mind that it is going to be a more linear, flat area around your landscape. And if you want variation, it's a good idea to erode it and then just recombine it in with itself like this, using a method of blend and whatever ratio works for you. The reason why is because you don't want a flat beach that goes all the way around your landscape uniformly. You want to break it up a little bit. And that's what this erosion node does. It's going to break up that beach and it's going to give it some variation. So you have some higher areas and some lower areas on your beach. Kind of like if you had some sand that was getting hit by water harder than other areas. Um, and so on and so forth. So I like to erode it and then recombine it back in with itself just so I can get that variation. And as you can see here, we keep the overall shape. But now we have some areas down here where the flow from the erosion has impacted us a little bit more rather than relying squarely on um, just the coast here. Let's see. And then you go about texturing your landscape the same way you normally would. Um, you can use a lakes node to kind of get a sea floor if you wanted, or a lake floor. Um, you can use height nodes in conjunction with each other to get what you want. So this one's selecting my beach, and then I'm sending that to a texture and a sat map, and I'm getting this result right here. We'll just let that build out for a second. And it's super easy uh, with decimals selected in the sliders. You can be as um, precise as you need to be to get the right selection. And then all I did is had a, a, night, um, a height node here that was about a decimal lower than my beach. And then the minimum is set to zero. That way I can get my water coming in and I can keep my beach. Now you might be wondering what are some other options here to kind of break up where this coast appears. And Gaia has a multitude of ways you can do that. You can be selective with it using a mask node or you can be more procedural. And I've made some examples here for you. So to start things off, let's go ahead and look at the mask node. I'll attach that to the mask of the coast. And if you look at the mask node here, I'm selecting just this area of my landscape. I'm selecting the whole area. You could just use a large brush and just select the landform right here, but I select it all the way down just to be safe. That'll make my coastline right here. And as you can see here, the rest of my landscape is not effect, uh, affected. And then we can texture it the exact same way. I have a texture node here, a sat map, and a mixer. We'll let that build out. And you can see here, I am using the mask of this mixer to my mask here, and then I'll put that in with my water. So now I just have a beach here on this side of my island rather than all the way around. Another way you can do it is by using a height selection 
to select just some very high values or low values here or wherever it is that you want your beach to appear. Set up a purlin with fairly small scale uh, noise patterns here. I used an auto level to really boost the contrast and break it up a little bit. Attach that to the coast. And as you can see here, we have some areas where their coast is being formed and it's not. And then the same thing here, all I did was um, send it over to the noise select option here. And I'm keeping this one, this combine right here as my main. And then the same thing with water. And now I have the coastline only appearing in specific areas when I mask it in. So that's a good way to go about doing it. You can make this selection a little wider if you wanted by increasing the minimum value or the maximum value. Um, in this case, I'm going to do the minimum and I'm going to set the minimum, I believe, to 0.1. Yeah, I can do even smaller values like 0 0.05. Uh, let's go 0 0.01. So now we got a really large area here. We'll select our Perlin, our auto, auto level. You can see here it's breaking it up quite a bit. There's our coastline. And now let's go ahead and look at the final color. The textures definitely do take a long time to build. Um, I am building this out at 0.5. It's, it's really not that long, but it does seem like it takes a while. So, um, And it's mostly affecting down here rather than up here. So if you wanted a larger beach here, you would play with the uh, maximum height here. So we can go to like 0.6 and that'll move further up our landscape. We can keep this probably as low as we want it but let's go let's go to one here just so we have a large selection there and that will change up values quite a bit <clears throat> and let's build this out normally i pause the video when things are building but i think you guys can can wait 10 seconds while this builds out <laughs> all right so there we go we have our coast here you can see here we still have our um for some reason it's not um, there we go. I don't know why it wasn't doing that. But as you can see here, we have our coast here. It gets kind of broken up right here where maybe it's more rocky and hard. And then we have a coast here. Just some beach patterns, so on and so forth. So it's a really good way to break that up so you don't have it just going around your entire landscape. You can, you can have separate little beaches where you need them. You can be selective with it or you can do it more procedurally. And as you can see here, it respects the transition amount, the beach size, uh, the intensity, all of that um, is being respected using this method. So, and it'll be the same for the mask. So that is a couple ways you can implement the coast uh, node and be selective on where it applies and get some in really interesting uh, values out of it. If you guys have any questions, please just let me know. I'll try to respond. You can also join the Discord where we talk about Gaia and other 3D stuff all the time. And I will see you guys in the next video.